Hi, I'm Eric Schmidt, and I write about music for Dirt. Alto saxophonist Rudresh Mahanthapa is critically acclaimed for his technical chops and ability to blend modern jazz with elements of his Indian ancestry. But in this interview, he says he's not trying to be a fusion artist, just a jazz player creating music that reflects the variety of his own background. Mahanthapa plays in the jazz duo Raw Materials October 30th at Old Main Chapel on the University of Colorado campus. Enjoyed uh, your CDs, and um, want to talk about anything about um, you know how you made um, Mother Tongue, and um, anything about raw materials, and your show here, and anything on your mind. So um, I don't know, maybe like the basic way to start out is um, you know how tell me about your life and how you came <laughs> came through Boulder, and and how you ended up doing what you do now. And uh, yeah, well, you know, right. <laughs> Well, I grew up in Boulder. Um, my dad's a professor at the university. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I went to Bear Creek Elementary in Southern Hills and Fairview High School. Okay. And, uh, I had a really great teacher growing up there that I studied with from when I started saxophone in fourth grade all the way until I left for college. This uh, um, saxophonist named Mark Harris, who's fairly well known, I think, in the local scene there. And, uh, yeah, so then I went off to music school, and I haven't, um, except to visit my parents, I haven't really come back a whole lot since, except for maybe a couple of summers in between years in college, okay. um, where I have to say I, I definitely cut my teeth playing on the Boulder Mall, okay. uh, on the Pearl Street Mall there. Uh, that's actually something I started doing in junior high, but then later on I started actually bringing a band down there, and and those were some of my, my first gigs, maybe, so to right. speak. So, uh, yeah. Um, and so where do we go from there? Uh, so I guess I ended up in New York. I finished my bachelor's at Berklee College of Music in Boston. Okay. And then, um, you know, the traditional path was you go to one of the big music schools like that, and, and then you move to New York. And I really didn't feel ready to do that, so... Uh, I moved to Chicago instead, just trying to find a big city with a healthy scene that maybe uh, maybe I could survive a little bit easier than, than just moving to New York. Okay, one step at a time. Yeah, exactly. So I did my master's there, and um, while I was there, I, I went out to California for uh, a workshop. At the, at the at Stanford University, they have an annual jazz workshop there, and I went out there specifically to study with um, a really great saxophonist whom you may know named Steve Coleman. Okay, yeah. And um, and Vijay was playing in Steve Coleman's band at that time, and so so Steve introduced us and kind of been playing together ever since. Okay. So he was living in California, and I was living in Chicago, and we would bring the other out to. Uh, to play with each other, um, and that's kind of, you know, the duo started almost by default because that was the easiest way for us to play together, you know, right. because, because of economics and, and yeah. all of that, you know, uh, and so because of that, as much as we play together in each other's groups now and in different collaborations, the, the duo is really our long-standing project. We've been playing together for almost 10 years now. All right. So we've definitely developed a relationship that, um, that I think is actually kind of rare in, in, in jazz today, again, because of economics and all, you know. It's hard to establish a relationship like that. You know, a lot of people go and make records and they hire ringers for their records, and right. um, but then they're never able to really tour with those same people. And for us to be able to do that, I think, you know, we've been very lucky. And, and with all the, you know, different combinations of people that you've played with, I imagine you get all kinds of different, you know, inspirations and influences and stuff from from each person. Is, is that just kind of a... 
you know, continuation of how jazz has worked, or is that something you've tried to do? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think if, you know, if we all keep our ears open we we're and try to surround ourselves with, uh, uh, to some extent, like-minded people, but um, by just continue playing with people that somehow challenge our ears and challenge our minds, you right. know, that's, that's how so, the art form moves forward. So like-minded, but not too like-minded, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's a, that's a way of saying it. I mean, I think, um, you know, there have always been circles, you know, and I don't think anybody, I don't think when Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie got together, they were saying that, you know, we're starting this thing called Bop, and we're the, okay, right. you know, circle. It just, it kind of ends up that way, where people are thinking in similar directions when they find each other, and, and New York has always been a, a great place to do that. All right. I, I know it's like a really dreaded. Um, writer question to musicians, but you know, if you have to put a label then on the direction that you know that you guys are taking or that, that you're um, working with, um, what, what would that be? You know, uh, yeah, that that is a tough one. I think, I mean, I just call it modern jazz. I call it contemporary jazz. I, I haven't really, you know, we we kind of. There was a time when we were very much pigeonholed by the press because because Vijay and I are both Indian American, but uh-huh. and our music is definitely informed by Indian music and and maybe even more than that by our you know by having kind of a bicultural identity by growing up right. um, to, to being raised in America by Indian immigrant parents, but but there's also so much else there. I mean, you know, we've. You know, I idolized Charlie Parker when I was in high school, and you know, and then later Coltrane, and um, and there's a bunch of other world music I listen to besides Indian music. But I think, but I think there is this, there is a certain several different movements in New York that are kind of going in that are very progressive, you know, rhythmically and harmonically and. Um, and I guess, I'd, you know, I guess I'd like to think we're part of that wave and music that's being informed by other, you know, cultures outside of Western culture. Right, okay. And, and I don't know, maybe I don't remember exact words, but something in your press to the effect of, like, you know, you want to take these, um, you know, Indian or, or whatever um, other sounds, but do them in a jazz context is that that's kind of the idea yeah it's more like an integration of the integration of concepts more than than like indo jazz fusion i mean there's a lot of bad indo jazz fusion out there and, and to me it's more about you know i'm not indian i'm indian american so i i draw from these things in a way that's meaningful to me but you know, at the core, I am a jazz musician. You know, okay. so it's more about the conceptual synthesis than um, than fusion. Gotcha. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, but having said that, I, I gather your mother tongue album had had a lot to do with with Indian, at least language and and uh, influences like that, yeah. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I, you know, the the attitude behind Mother Tongue was more that, um, yeah, I think much like in uh, kind of a dated view of Latin America, you know, I remember, what year did you graduate high school, or how old are you? Oh, man, I, I'm all of 25, so I don't have a lot of memories, but, but okay. um, I got... So you're about 10 years younger. Than yeah, me. I got out in 99. Okay, so I graduated in 88, and I I think one thing that really struck me was there was a kid who was Argentinian, um, and, you know, there was kind of a view even back then, and that wasn't that long ago, that, you know, everything south of Texas was was Mexico. Right, right. So it's like, you know, people ask this kid, like, if his his mom made tacos and stuff, and he's just like, no, I'm Argentinian, and, and that always kind of struck me, and then when I moved to Chicago, um, some of the easiest gigs to get when you m- first move to any city, um, mainly because of the hours and the pay, are um, salsa and merengue gigs. Okay, right. And, um, and to see that unity of, like, even though all these people spoke Spanish, they spoke di- different dialects of Spanish, and that, like, you know, 
that Dominican never wanted to be confused for a Puerto Rican and vice versa, you know. Right. So to me, 